This is Chief Conti of the Metropolitan Police Department, and I'm asking for your help. We all must avoid using our cell phones while driving as lives are increasingly at risk with this behavior. So much can happen when you are distracted by a phone, and the results could be deadly. Help us make Vision Zero a reality by keeping your eyes on the street. MPD is enforcing the district's hands-free distracted driving laws. One text or call can wreck it all. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, if you want to be on the program, 877-973-7425. I would just like to note that my show has lasted longer in syndication than CNN Plus has lasted. Warner Brothers is killing CNN Plus. Three weeks ago, uh, without a lot of fanfare and a lot of defensiveness uh, by CNN, uh, CNN Plus was launched. Uh, nobody watches Don Lemon, and for some reason, CNN thought people might actually pay to watch Don Lemon. It didn't make any sense. So this was Jeff Zucker's big play. Jeff Zucker looked at the, the world and thought that it needed another streaming service and, and one specifically by a news network that increasingly people were burning out on from the left to the right, uh, particularly on the right. It had lost a lot of credibility. And so he decided to launch CNN Plus. And he was going to do more of the Anthony Bourdain style docudrama series sort of stuff as opposed to hard news. And uh, it, it didn't work. Uh, so Zucker, now you got to understand this because I'm actually fascinated by the soap opera stuff here. I don't want to spend a lot of time here. Got a lot of important stuff to talk about more than this. But uh, this news is happening right now. So Zaslav, uh, David Zaslav is the head of Discovery, which is buying, has now bought Warner Brothers. It is well known within the entertainment media industry that David Zaslav and Jeff Zucker are best friends, besties for life. They have been through the thick of it together. Zaslav is buying CNN, which is in decline in large part because CNN decided to go for a more raw, emotional, clearly left of center editorial direction. They made it all about Trump. Trump is now gone. They can't sustain themselves. It was Zucker's call. So Zaslav, when all the, the scandal stuff breaks out with Chris Cuomo and the investigation, Zaslav gets... Warner Brothers, AT&T, to fire Jeff Zucker so that Zaslav doesn't have to fire his best friend and then gets Warner Brothers from AT&T and the moment he gets it, kills CNN Plus, which was Jeff Zucker's big dream, big idea. Um I'm just I'm fascinated by the by the drama side of this uh, between uh, all of that. Uh, I, again, I say uh, you got something there with CNN Plus, but you need to partner with Apple or somebody and have it be the the immediately available uh, streaming news service to give you an update on the hard news of the day, not the partisan lamentations of Don Lemon. Now that being said, we got stuff we got to move on to because we got to talk about Reedy Creek. Uh, now I'm going to make everybody mad here. Occasionally, you know, my job here is to tell you the news. It's not to just be the rah-rah cheerleader for one side. It's to tell you the news and to analyze it as ably as I can so you can make up your own mind. So I will tell you out of the gate, the Reedy Creek Improvement District was formed by an act of the Florida legislature in 1967 at the request of the man known as Walt Disney. That was his legal name. Walt Disney had bought up 25,000 acres, 36 square miles of Central Florida to build his vision, Disney World. He got landlocked with Disneyland in California. He wanted bigger uh, He wanted bigger land. So he went to Florida on the opposite side of the coast where people did not have as much name ID and, and recognition of him and what he wanted to do. And he started buying up land. Tens of thousands of acres. I think I read one time you can fit like fit like one hundred uh, islands of Manhattan inside Disney World's uh, the, the amount of land they own. They've got a ton of undeveloped land down there. What Disney asked the state of Florida to do was to allow him to have a tax improvement district where a lot of the revenue generated would be poured back into it and not go to the state in re- in return. 
Disney would pour that money into infrastructure development to create jobs and would maintain the roads and infrastructure, the power grid and the like. Also, it would exempt Disney from state uh, regulations for the environment, building, and the like. So Disney could experiment with new designs on the grounds that, look, we're not going to build a roller coaster that kills people because that would be bad for business. But let us have some flexibility there. And the state of Florida granted it in 1967. And the state of Florida has benefited greatly from the Reedy Creek Tax Improvement District. It has generated a massive amount of jobs. And the state of Florida has not had to pour taxpayer dollars into maintaining the roads and bridges and power grids and water treatment facilities and the like. Disney even takes care of the fire department. It has been beneficial. I am actually uh, not a fan of picking these winners and losers. I'm, I'm not opposed, per se, to tax improvement districts uh, in large part because they do allow developers and others to take care of uh, tax improvements in ways that the state otherwise cannot. Uh, There's a difference between giving a subsidy and allowing a tax improvement district. And I I actually, in, in the conversations I've had with friends of mine, I don't know that a lot of my conservative friends know the difference. Uh, I, this, I actually used to specialize in this area of tax law. Um, I, I would do, so in Georgia, you can do in lieu of property taxes, bonds in lieu of property taxes and things like that. So you can, uh, it, it gives an incentive to build a business. And what the business says is that, look, in exchange for us not paying property taxes for X period of time, we will build, maintain, and grow the infrastructure in this area. In addition, we will create jobs. Now, sometimes states go overboard giving too much to the businesses, and arguably they gave too much to to Disney. But they're not necessarily bad things. You shouldn't be automatically opposed to them because oftentimes it actually saves the surrounding taxpayers a lot of money while growing infrastructure and jobs in the area. But it's hard for me to justify keeping a tax improvement district going from 1967 to 2022 and exempting Disney in ways other theme parks in Florida are not necessarily exempted and other businesses in Florida. They, they've given Disney something more. But here's the rub, and we need to dive in a little bit on this so you understand it. The Florida House of Representatives today is probably going to kill the Reedy Creek Tax Improvement District that Disney has. The Florida State Senate did yesterday. Ron DeSantis requested they end it. Now, you got to follow along with me here and listen, because I'm making a nuanced point here, and some of you are going to be mad at me, and you shouldn't be. We all agree it is commonly held, Ron DeSantis largely said so, the reason the Reedy Creek Tax Improvement District is going to die is because Disney opposed the Florida Parental Rights and Education Bill that critics call the Don't Say Gay Bill. It's a misreading of the law. It doesn't do that, but that's what critics have said. It was a poll-tested way to try to gin up opposition, and in fact, a majority of voters actually support the law. But Florida is going to strip Disney of its tax improvement district because Disney spoke out against uh, the law. There's a problem. We might as well be realists in dealing with the problem. In 1996, the United States Supreme Court issued a ruling in O'Hare Truck Service versus the city of Northlake. It's a very minor case that has taken on a life of its own since it came out. In that case, the mayor of the city of Northlake decided uh, to prohibit the city from recommending referring anyone to or doing business with O'Hare Truck Service as payback for Mr. O'Hare opposing the mayor's election. So O'Hare Truck Service sued and said the owner had the right to exercise his First Amendment rights. And though the action would otherwise be lawful, the city of Northlake should not be allowed to punish the company because the owner or the employees spoke out and exercised their First Amendment. And in a 7-2 ruling in 1996, written by Justice Anthony Kennedy with William Rehnquist and Sandra Day O'Connor and all the liberals joining, uh, Antonin Scalia and and Clarence Thomas filed the only two dissents. It was 7-2. The Supreme Court ruled that uh, a, a state... A state, a county, a city, any governmental entity 
that takes a lawful action, an action that it could under the law take, but takes it to punish someone for exercising their First Amendment rights, makes the law, makes the act unlawful. It's a perfectly legal thing for the city to do, to say, don't use this truck service. But because the intent was to punish the business for exercising its First Amendment rights, it became illegal. They couldn't do it. The O'Hare Truck Service versus City of North Lake case laid the foundation for a case you're all familiar with, Masterpiece Cake Shop versus Colorado Civil Rights Commission, a case that came out in 2018. In that case, Jack Phillips, the baker, did not want to bake a cake for a gay wedding. He was sued by the gay couple. The Colorado Civil Rights Commission compared refusing to bake a cake uh, to being a Nazi. They disparaged Jack Phillips all the way up to their decision punishing Jack Phillips. And the Supreme Court said they had a clear antagonistic hostile bias to him. There was no way he could get a fair hearing going into this. And so they threw the case out. They did not, they did not at the time rule on whether or not it was constitutional or not for Jack Phillips to say, I'm not going to bake a cake for a gay wedding. What they ruled is that it didn't matter because the Colorado Civil Rights Commission had shown itself so hostile to him to begin with, there was no way he could get a fair hearing from the Colorado Civil Rights Commission. O'Hare Truck Service was the basis of that. In California, a couple of years ago, the state of California uh, attempted to pass a law that would prohibit the state of California from entering into any contract with any business helping Donald Trump build his border wall. The legislature actually wound up not passing the law because the attorneys for the state said it would violate the O'Hare truck service case, that it was, um, it was a, a clear showing of the state moving to punish a business for participating in a lawful act with the federal government and they use the O'Hare truck service case. All of this is to say, look, we conservatives can get in a bubble as well. It's not just the left in a bubble. And all of my friends are like, yes, yes, stick it to Disney, stick it to them, finish them. And I get it. I personally think that what the Florida legislature and Ron DeSantis are doing is deterrence to future woke corporations deciding they want to be involved and they're going to speak out. And will they think twice, knowing that the state can come for them, knowing that the state can take away from them certain uh, gifts and responsibilities and privileges and rights the state has given them in the past? If they speak up for the wokes, maybe other corporations will be deterred. And that's a good thing. This is a situation of deterrence, and it's a good thing. But also, I think we have to be mindful. Voters hate bullies. The left has been losing because the left has been perceived as the bullies in this case. Now it's the right bullying Disney. They won. They already passed the law. They beat Disney. They passed the Florida uh, Parental Rights and Education Act. This is just spiking the football. And diehard fans of any team, love it when their players spike the football. Everybody else says it's unsportsmanlike conduct. So you and I can say, yeah, this is the, yes, spike the football, rub it in their nose, we got the touchdown. But a lot of other people might reject it. Remember, there's no such thing as a permanent political majority. There are only soft landings and hard crashes. So you and I can cheer on Florida for doing this to Disney, but... The voters might actually get upset about it, that we're rubbing Disney's nose in something we've already won. It's worth keeping that in mind. It's also worth keeping in mind the O'Hare truck service case. So here's my pet theory. I suspect, given, in fact, that the Republicans in Florida wisely added a couple of other tax districts to get rid of, I think that's their excuse. They're going to say, look, courts, we're getting rid of multiple tax improvement districts. But even the governor's own words... Make it clear this was all about punishing Disney. So here's my theory. You and I are being played. They're politicians. They're politicians. We are well familiar with Republican and Democratic politicians doing things to please the base, knowing the courts will actually stop them from getting their way. So I wouldn't be surprised if a decade from now we find out Ron DeSantis and the Florida Republicans were all very well aware of the O'Hare truck case. And they decided to do this anyway, to score a win with the base, show their conservative bona fides, and deter future corporations from acting. 
also knowing the federal courts will throw out the action, save Disney, preserve the Reedy Creek Tax District, and then the Republicans can blame the courts. I mean, after all, this is how American politicians operate these days. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you would like to be on the program, I got to play you some audio real quick. This is from ABC's Good Morning America. And I, I got to say, I am uh, pleased uh, that they did this real quick. Um, Sam Stein from the, where is he now? Uh, MSNBC Politico writes, um, according to Chris Lick to the staff, uh, CNN plus staff will get 90 days of pay and benefits after which if they don't find opportunities in the network, they'll get six months severance with potentially more depending on length of prior service. Uh, so there is the status. They are definitely shutting it down. Uh, I want to play this audio. This is from, um, ABC's Good Morning America. Now, they're running with a uh, AP NORC Center for Public Research poll that show 56% of Americans favor a mask mandate, 24% oppose, 20% have no opinion. Uh, you can tell that this is off by going to airports and seeing how few people actually are wearing masks. Uh, certainly, the majority have taken their masks off. Uh, so the, the reality of the polling... Uh, given the behavior is probably the polling is wrong. Uh, people are lying to pollsters about what they think. So ABC and Gio uh, Benitez actually did a little bit of sciencing, discussing how airplanes work. Listen to this. So Gio, remind us, how does the air filtration work on board? So, Robin, the science actually shows that 99.9% .9 of the particles are filtered out. That includes viruses. Let me go ahead and show you how that works right here. So the air comes from here, above the overhead bin. It wraps around under the seat. It's actually filtered out under the seat. And what happens is that it's refreshed every three minutes. Half of it is filtered air. Half of it is new air coming in from the outside. And that's why JetBlue and the other airlines actually say that the air here on board in an airplane, while it's in flight is actually as clean as a hospital room. Hmm. He's not wrong. He's right. Listen, I, I can get people who in the crowded airport or, or uh, waiting in the line on the jet bridge to get onto the plane. They want to keep a mask on. Once you're on the plane and the plane is, is away from the gate, you can take your mask off. Planes are really good. 99.5% of particulate matter is gone uh, within three minutes. In fact, it's hard in planes for particulate uh, because you remember, particularly at air, uh, you've also got a, an air pressure differential uh, and it's very, very hard for a virus to transmit even to the person next to you, even if you're all not wearing masks. The level of fear and panic out by there by progressives who demand people keep masks on, you can put on an N95 mask, make it secure to your face and nothing's gonna bother you. You, the rest of us don't have to wear it. You can wear your N95 and you will be fine. That is what the science says. This freak out by people on the left is amazing. There's a woman, she's got her pronouns in her Twitter bio. That should tell you everything you need to know. She says she's an epidemiologist and um, she says she's still going to wear her mask even though the mask mandate is gone. There is literally no one in America making this woman take her mask off. And somehow or another, people on the left have internalized this as with the mask mandate gone away, we're not allowed to wear masks anymore. No, you can still wear your mask. None of us are going to force you to take your mask off. We don't want to see your face anyway. Keep your mask on. You'll be fine. We'll be fine. Everyone can live their life together. And when the plane's in the air, you can take your mask off and still be perfectly safe if you want. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be a part of this here program, you make it through the call screener, I might just take your call, depending on whether or not what you have to say is relevant to anything I'm talking about. We loosen it up on occasion. Nonetheless, uh, you, can, you can call in. I, in fact, am going to go to the phones. I'm going to begin with Tony calling in. Welcome to the program. Tony, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good. What's going on? Oh, I, I, 
thank you first of all for the platform and thank you for your show i love it um i just wanted to make a comment on the ron DeSantis disney thing um mm-hmm. i believe your theory had had some good measure i just wanted to add to it that 78 percent well statistically speaking with my research 78 percent of all parents which converts to voters really do want parent choice and really are not happy with many of the aspects of this case. So I was just making the comment that I think it will be okay when it comes to the voter end of things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, regardless look, of the- I, my, my big concern here is just in, in my time in politics, voters are fickle. Uh, and oh, yeah. the, there are these moderate independent voters. They will turn on you like a dime. Uh, and, and you do have to sometimes be careful at the same time. Look, I honestly personally don't care if the court throws this out and says, well, it was politically motivated against their First Amendment speech. I personally think Disney will have spent so much on lobbyists and on on, on lawyers. It will be a deterrent for the next company that wants to go woke and chime in on this stuff. Uh, conservatives should be willing to fight back, even if the court steps in and says, whoa, whoa, you can't do it this way. Well, that's okay. Um, keep doing it and force these people to go to court and spend money on lawyers and lobbyists, and that will deter uh, these businesses from standing up. And, you know, by the way, Tony, it's, it's worth pointing out here that uh, something like 85% of the Disney employees who protested were in California, not Florida, which I find kind of well, striking here. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's I, kind of a wow moment. Yeah, it is. Uh, And I agree with you. Parents overwhelmingly supported this law. Thanks very much for the phone call. Parents support the law. But I guess my point is the law did get passed. This comes across as being a sore winner to some voters. Look, I I study voters. I have studied voters. Don't be mad at me for saying this because, look, I'm fine with them doing it. But you got to understand that we, you and I are conservatives by and large. There are a lot of independent and moderate voters out there who are with us right now, and they're largely with us because they view the left as bigger a-holes than we are. If they suddenly decide, no, no, actually, they all are, they may stay home. They may go vote for the left again. We don't want that. So just we got to be careful in managing our relationship with the voters who are with us but are not us. Now, back to the phones. Arthur, you're next. Welcome. Okay. One of the things they never... <clears throat> really asking these polls is uh are you in favor of it because uh, of, of, are you even, are you in favor of it because it's legal like the mass mandate or are you not in favor of it because it's not legal and if it's not legal i'm not in favor of it i really right. think we ought to stick to the law well and, and you know as well here, so Arthur, does the there's... cdc really have the uh, the authority to put out a mass mandate Right. That's and the question, right? My, yeah, my question is, uh, look, I've read the law in question, and I think there's a case to be made that they may have the authority, unlike the eviction mandate, or the eviction moratorium, which they never did. I don't know that uh, they do have the legal authority to issue the mask mandate. I think it is, is a, it's a tougher call. It, it's a very clear, very, very clear legal situation they never had the authority on the eviction mandate this one's kind of 50 50 it depends on on what the judges think uh i personally think that they do not have the mandate to do a mask mandate that it should be up to the individual states i don't think the federal health care power is that expansive um we'll see if, if this does go on appeal they're going to appeal it now and oddly enough they're going to appeal it not to bring it back but they're going to appeal it to preserve the power for future use which i find striking now all of that all of that situation being said my personal view here is if you want to wear a mask keep wearing a mask no one's making you take your mask off but what is happening is the left, which continues to be the, the biggest group of bullies in the country right now, are bullying everyone else, demanding we put on a mask. And as, as for the polling, you know, they're polling all Americans. They're not polling people who fly. Poll the people who fly. You can see it in the airports. You can see it on the airplanes. Overwhelmingly, the people on the airplanes and in the airports, they don't want to wear the masks. So it doesn't affect you if you're not regularly flying. 
or on a train or a bus. And by the way, it was it, 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 the whole application of it was bizarre as well because it wasn't applicable on school buses. It wasn't applicable to kids on buses, but it was applicable to kids on planes. So if a kid was on a school bus, he didn't have to wear a mask. If a kid was on a, a Greyhound bus, he didn't have to wear a mask. But if a kid was on an airplane, which has better air filtration than a bus, the kid did have to wear a mask. It never made any sense as applied. None whatsoever. Now, that being said, I got audio from the president of the United States on this, and this is rather bizarre. Uh, the president was asked about Title 42. Title 42 is the border issue and, and allowing illegals across the border. He was asked about Title 42. Very bizarrely, instead, he started talking about the masks. On Title 42, sir, are you considering delaying lifting Title 42? No, what I'm considering is continuing to hear from my, uh, my uh, well, first of all, there's going to be an appeal by the Justice Department. Because as a matter of principle, we want to be able to be in a position where if, in fact, it is strongly concluded by the scientists that we need Title 42, that we'd be able to do that. But there has been no decision on extending Title 42. On Title 42, sir, are you considering delaying lifting Title 42? What is going on here? I mean, you, you hear the question. Are you considering delaying Title 42? Instead, he answers about the masks and gets confused and trips all over himself. I I, I can't. This is radio. It's not television. There are, there are times that I wish this was television. It is an editorial choice. It is an editorial choice that I make often. What pictures do you use? I run my my Substack and I occasionally put in pictures. Often I have an account with the Associated Press. I can use their editorial images. And oftentimes, if there's an absurd politician, I'll put in an absurd picture of them. It's an editorial choice made. The media does it all the time. You're very aware of it these days. Uh, when you look at the New York Times, you look at Politico, you look at the Washington Post, you even look at places like CNN and, and the like, you will very often see a picture of a Republican looking absurd and a picture of a Democrat looking leaderly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, that's what happens. And more often than not, uh, members of the media these days go out of their way to make President Biden look presidential. They are trying to protect him. And so I was shocked to go to Politico. There's a story that, uh, that we need to talk about. The president is announcing another $800 million in military aid for Ukraine, including heavy artillery, bringing the total U.S. military aid uh, since Russia invaded to $3.4 billion. The picture Politico chose to use... It's not a flattering picture of Joe Biden. He looks like a doddering old man lost in thoughts. This is the Joe Biden who the other day turned around on an empty stage and shook hands with the air. Why aren't members of the media, you know, if it was Trump, I mean, my gosh, uh, CNN routinely had on psychiatrists to talk about how Donald Trump had some level of dementia or narcissistic complex or the like. Joe Biden very clearly has something going on, and they're not talking about it. And we're starting to get subtle hints here in the media. This picture in Exodus, it's striking to me. And, and I started looking around the media. The pictures that the media is starting to use for Joe Biden is telling a story that they know something is wrong. And now there are reports starting to come out that he's thinking he is going to run for re-election. There's no way. There is no, I will be stunned. I Look, it can happen and it probably will because they have no one else. If Joe Biden doesn't run for re-election, you're going to have the, the Kamala Harris, Pete Boot edge, edge race, and it's going to be savage and self-destructive, which is good for our side. I personally, at this point, look, and I, I don't say this as endorsement. I've always got to say that because I have so many friends who are going to run for president. I don't say this as an endorsement, but I think Ron DeSantis, uh, the way he's headed, 
unless something throws off his game in Florida for re-election, he's probably going to be the nominee. He just is. But man, who are the Democrats going to run? They're going to have a, a, a 200-person primary. They're not going to give it to Kamala Harris. She's a moron. But these pictures of Biden are striking to me. They're striking. They're not flattering pictures in a press that overwhelmingly tries to flatter him. Now, uh, Biden is going to give this money to Ukraine. And it is notable that we are giving Ukraine more money than the European Union combined. Some of you will think that's bad. I actually don't think that's bad. Poland, we have more money than those countries. Poland and the and the UK are stepping up um, not as much as us. They don't have the, the revenue we, do, we have, but as far as things go, they are, they're stepping up. Uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz of Germany has decided that uh, they're not going to provide any heavy, heavy weaponry like tanks and military vehicles, and he slowed other arms shipments. In large part, they say they don't have it to do, and uh, Europeans are furious with the Germans. We're showing real leadership with Ukraine, and I think that's good. I do. Uh, I think us sending this, uh, the arms, the money, the weapons to Ukraine is a good thing. I do. I think uh, the 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 more we can weaken the Russians, the better off it is for us, showing some level of leadership. Uh, the president also said Russian-affiliated warships or Russian-affiliated ships, rather, cargo ships, are going to be banned from U.S. ports. Europeans have already done this. More importantly, the president is going to expedite fuel deliveries from the United States to Europe, and that's good, uh, making us the world's largest exporter of liquid natural gas. The problem is his domestic oil production is all for show. It's not real. John Kerry has pretty much given away the game here. It's been reported that you told the White House National Climate Advisor, Gina McCarthy, uh, that the new U.S. commitment on fossil fuels needed to be at least 50% 50% reductions by 2030 for the U.S. to be a credible negotiator. Is that a goal that's still realistic? Well, Gina McCarthy didn't need me to suggest a, a level. She's she's very savvy and knows uh, exactly what we needed to do. And she did an incredible job with her team in pulling uh, all the efforts of the United States together to come up with a realistic target. We did not want to put something phony out there. We wanted to know this was something we could, in fact, reach. And so Gina and her team and the rest of us who were involved in the process uh, all agreed that a 50 to 52 percent reduction was was something we could achieve. It's realistic. Uh, It's more than a lot of other countries. Canada is not at that level. Uh, Japan, others. But others are doing what they can. And we're not complaining about their levels. so they still want a 50% reduction by 2030, and yet they say they're going to expand domestic production right now? That's not really going to happen. That's not realistic. Uh, this is all smoke and mirrors from the Biden administration on releasing more oil. They say they want to do it while also telling companies, don't you dare do it? What do you think the companies are going to do? Produce the oil and get in trouble or not? I can tell you what they're going to do. It's not going to be to produce more oil. This is why we are back in in Carter economic times. It, this is the most bizarre thing. You know, so I have partnered with, and I've gotten some emails from folks about GoldCo. Uh, I'm partnering with GoldCo as, as an advertiser. And for years, I said, I, I'm not going to take gold, silver, precious metal advertising because uh, it's not something that, that I invest in. And that was when we had like a good economy when we were still living on the 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 uh, fumes of the Reagan economy. Now suddenly we're back to Jimmy Carter times, where actually I think it makes sense for some people to do this to protect your retirement savings. We're seeing forty year high inflation, interest rate hikes. We're seeing increased gas prices. If you got fifty thousand dollars or more in your IRA, four hundred one k or retirement savings, your money could be at risk given what's going on right now, and you don't have a lot of options. But you can protect your money with physical gold and silver. You can call Gold Co. at 855-904-5933. They're going to send you a free wealth protection kit to learn how to use gold and silver to protect and grow your money. Thousands of retirees are protecting their retirement savings, and many are getting $10,000 or more in free silver for doing it. So call my friends at Gold Co. 
Find out how you qualify for the special offer and see if they can help you protect your retirement against inflation and stock market crashes. See if they can help you. Uh, The number again is 855-904-5933 to make it easy on you if you text the word Eric, E-R-I-C-K, text Eric to 33777, 33777. I will send you back Gold Coast number so you can call them. Tell them I sent you. Uh, this story is is way too funny not to share. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number, if you want to be on the show, 877-973-7425. So there was a, uh aircraft intrusion above the Washington, D.C. yesterday. Uh, the Capitol Police urged the evacuation of the Capitol, the Library of Congress, uh, the Cannon House Office Building, the Longworth House Office Building, the, the Rayburn House Office Building, and all Senate Office Buildings. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Capitol Police said they were tracking an aircraft that poses a probable threat to the Capitol complex and ordered its evacuation. According to the uh, email sent, uh, United States Capitol Police tracking an aircraft poses probable threat to the Capitol complex. Evacuate U.S. Capitol, Capitol Visitor Centers, Hart, Dirksen, Russell, Cannon, Longworth, Rayburn, Library of Congress, all buildings, Jefferson, Madison, and Adams, U.S. Botanical Gardens, Administrative and Conservatory Buildings. If you're on the Senate side of the Capitol or Capitol Visitor Center in the Hart, Dirksen, or Russell buildings, move north toward Union Station to the Aircraft Intrusion Assembly Area in the parks just prior to Columbus Circle Northeast. Do not stop. If you're on the House side or U.S. Botanical side, move south toward Garfield Park. Do not stop. If you're in the Library of Congress, move south toward Folger and Providence Parks. Do not stop. If you're in Ford, O'Neill, Postal Square, Senate Page Dorm, School at Webster Hall, Senate Child Care Center, Long, uh, Library of Congress Day Care Center, remain indoors. Updates will be provided by the Capitol Park Service. Um, A flight was diverted from Reagan National Airport over to Dulles as well. Turns out they were doing uh, Army Golden Knights parachutists at the Washington Nationals baseball game. Somebody at the Department of Defense Forgot to tell the Capitol Police. <laughs> it's the U.S. Army Parachute Team. That's what happened. Uh, military Appreciation Nights. <laughs> the Washington Nationals Baseball Park call required all of Capitol Hill to be evacuated. Um, <laughs> somebody forgot to call the Capitol Hill Police Department and tell them Hey, it's the good guys jumping in on the Nationals game. Oh, my gosh. Major disruption yesterday on Capitol Hill in Washington. Failures to communicate all around. My gosh. The death of any business happens right there, the failure to communicate. When we come back, critical race theory and schools. We got to talk about it. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.